That means he enjoyed the service. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's good, man. Yes. Yes. So good. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Matthew and just linger around uh, chapter 13, I think it is. And we'll get to the verse here in a minute. I'm so glad that Paul wrote in his, in his word uh, in Philippians 3 and 13 he said brethren I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind me and the word says I'm reaching forth into the things which are before me yes. he said I press toward the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ amen Paul said I forget everything that happened of yesterday and I press toward the mark of God that's something to be excited about. Yes. Matthew chapter 13, starting at verse 55. <clears throat> Matthew 13, 55. I'm also glad that Paul wrote Casey in his word, uh, the same Paul I just talked about. He also wrote in his word, he said, uh, that I have taught myself to be to be so spiritually mature that I'm like this all the time. He said that when Blake things come my way and, and stuff tries to elevate me, he said, I stay like this. I don't let it persuade me to be prideful. He said, but also when I'm like this and things come and knock me off my feet and I'm in my lowest of my lows, Paul said, I'm still like this. He said, no circumstance will change my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I love the maturity side of what Paul said. He said, don't matter if I'm at my very lowest, I'm here. It don't matter if I'm at my very highest and I'm the, the most wealthy and people's giving like crazy and I'm the most healed that I've ever been, I'm still here. I don't change my mind of who Jesus is. I don't let it bring me up. I don't let it bring me down. He said, I'm staying like right here. I'll never change. Amen. Amen. It excites me because it, it lets me know that I have a blessed hope that it's, it's possible. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Scott, it's possible to get there. That in my very of my lowest, I don't just, my God, I'm just going to give up on everything and, and die and not come to church no more. I don't like nobody no more. Get away from me. Bunch of hellions, all of them. Leave me alone. Paul said, I ain't, I ain't doing it. Paul said, I'm, I'm here. No matter what, if people's mean to me, I'm here. If people cuss me, I'm here. If I'm, I'm people want to give to me, I'm here. If everybody loves me, I'm still here. I'm not going to let it elevate me or lower me. Paul said, I will not let it change my mind who Jesus Christ is in my life. Amen. 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 I will not let it change my life uh, in my mind of who Jesus is in my life. I won't change my mind about him. If I'm going through the gutters, he's still good. If I'm on the mountaintop, he's still good. If I'm broke than I've ever been, he's still God. Amen. If I'm the richest I've ever been, he's still on the throne. Amen. Amen. He changes not, the word says. Yeah. He's the same. And Paul said, I've learned that about him. If I'm in prison, he's the same. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. If they're celebrating me, Paul said, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. Jesus is the same. Amen? Amen. Matthew 13 and 55. I guess I could have myself, couldn't I? Matthew 13 and 55. Yes. Because it This is what the Word of God says. Jesus was teaching and uh, healing, and he, he began to teach some more. And after he taught, uh, let's go to fifty. Let's go to fifty-three. The Bible says that it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, that he departed thence, and he was coming to his own country, and he taught them in the synagogues. He taught them in the church. God is a fancy name for church. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm pulling up another translation real quick. I done it one time and Facebook blew up and I was, I was garbage because I had a phone behind the pulpit. I hope they don't feel nobody. I got the Bible too, it makes you feel better. I got paper. Amen. I just uh, I wanted to pull up a different translation really quickly, but but he said that he went to the church into the synagogue, in so much that they were astonished. And he said, "Whence hath this man this wisdom, and that he does these mighty works?" Now he's in the church in his hometown, 
He's talking about Jesus, right? Y'all with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus went back home to Nazareth and began to teach in the church. The church folk looked at him and said, they were astonished and said, where's this man and this wisdom? Where did it come from? Uh, and all these mighty works. Is not, this is what the word said, is not this the carpenter's son? This is what the church was saying from back then. Not us. We're perfect. He said, is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? And Are they not all here with us? Whence then has this man all these things? And the Bible says that, and they were offended in him. I'm talking about the church folk. Amen. 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 Come on. Now I'm talking about the old wretched sinner down the road. The Bible said he went to the synagogue to preach, yeah. to teach. And, and they said, uh, the word says they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not with honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief. So Jesus couldn't do many works there because of the people's unbelief in him. Amen? But the word said that Jesus went home to Nazareth, went to the church and began to teach, and, and they were so astonished at the words that he, he spoke. Then they began to label him, David, and say, you know what? This is just, this is Joseph's boy. This is Mary's son. There's his brothers. There's his sisters. This is his hometown. Amen. His dad is just a carpenter. Where does wisdom come from? Where does knowledge come from? Who is? Who does he think he is? The Bible says to the point that it bothered them so much that they begin to get offended at him. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's talking scripture. Mm -hmm. He ain't cussing. He ain't swarping. He ain't drinking. He ain't doing ungodly things. This is God in flesh. Yeah. Back home. And they, the church got so offended in him. And so who does he think he is? Why does he think he can talk this way and teach this way? It's just Joseph. It's just a carpenter. Yeah. This is just Mary's boy. This is what I got right. I'm so glad to know that in heaven I'm not just called Herbie's son. Amen. I'm so glad when, when I when, when I get to heaven and, and they look and read my name, read in the Lamb's Book of Life, it ain't just, well, there's Corey, there's Herbie and Tammy's boy. Yeah. Uh, they do some remodeling sometimes. Yeah. Hey, man, it's Oscar Mayer <laughs> Winter Bob Construction, Chris. Who is who? It's just it's just Tammy's son. You know, there's his brother Tyler. Are you here tonight? That dog. Why don't you call him? Yeah. There's there's his brother Tyler. There's his brother Daniel. There's his cousins. You know, just Corey. I'm glad to know when I get to heaven, my name's not just Corey. I'm glad, Keith, that I'm not known by my occupation. I'm glad that I'm not just known as an equipment operator. I'm not known as a carpenter. I'm not known uh, as a mechanic. I'm not known of the worldly things. I'm glad when, when the world might look at us and label us with these things. I'm so glad that heaven don't label us with these things. Amen. Though they was calling Jesus, that's just a carpenter's son. I'm glad to know that God was looking at us. I know that's my boy. Yeah. That's God in flesh. Amen. 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 I wonder why they were so astonished by what he was. He was born in flesh. They, he was blowing their mind. Yeah. Yeah. Who does he think he is? That's just Joseph's son. Amen. I'm glad that I'm not just Elijah's dad. Amen. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not just Carly's dad. I'm glad that my identity in itself don't lie in I'm the pastor of this church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that my identity don't lie. I'm the drummer. I'm the guitar player. I'm the singer. I'm the bass player. I'm the worshiper. I'm the prayer where our identity does not lie in those things. Those them things is a part of who we are. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That is not who God's called us to be. First and foremost, we've said it many times. Get it in your mind, both of you two. Get it in your mind before you anything else and anybody ever 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 labels you of anything else. You're a son and you're a daughter, period. Amen. You're a son of God and you're a daughter of God. No matter how good you can sing, oh, yeah. how bad you can sing, no matter how much you give, how much you don't give, how much you come to church, how much you don't come to church. All that stuff does not matter to God. Right. Amen. You need that stuff to be a better disciple and a better follower and, and surround yourself to fight better. You need each other. Yes, we need the church. The church needs you. But that does not, it's not who your identity is. You're a son and you're a daughter. Amen. Amen. Of God. So if I become a worship leader, mom's a worship leader, you stand to your feet I'm very quickly. 
If I'm a worship leader, I have to remind myself, though pride might try to come in. Not through her. She's so humble. She really is. But I have to remind myself who I am in Jesus. If I'm a part of the worship team, can y'all stand up? Oh, that makes me wonder. Come on, all the worship team that plays up here. Chrissy. There you go. If I'm a part of the worship team, I have to remind myself I'm just a son, I'm just a daughter. Amen. Period. Amen. Amen. If I'm on the prayer team or the intercession team or the worship team, now the whole church be standing up right here. Or I'm just a born again believer in general. You stand to your feet. If you've been born again. Hallelujah. Y'all give yourself a hand clap. Y'all so pretty. Hallelujah. Hip, hip. Hip, 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 hooray. So as Hallelujah. we stand as a born again believer, think of yourself in Jesus' shoes. Now he come to the church. It's like y'all come to church tonight. Y'all yeah. did good. You put your best clothes on. Half of us brushed our teeth. What teeth we have. We brushed what hair we do have left. We done pretty good. We made it. Yeah. Now, could you imagine making the church looking at you and say, who do you think you are? Yeah. You're just Corey's dad. You're just Handy's husband. You're just Chrissy's husband. You're, you're Scott's wife. Who do you think you are? Yeah. He's just from Bradshaw. Amen. You're just from Bradshaw. You're just from Yeager. You're from McDowell County. Who do you think that you are? A daughter of God. You can sit down. And, and Jesus, and the word said that they were so offended. Because he came to church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm just telling you what the word says. They were so offended that he come to church. Amen. I want to tell you that little suit jacket that I had on earlier, it means nothing to God. Amen. These fancy pants don't mean nothing. Them striping pants don't mean nothing to God. Let me just go ahead and burst some religious bubbles real quick because this is our church and we can just do this type of stuff. You can't keep me out because we've got the paperwork got the title. Amen. Them hats that you wear, it means nothing to God. Amen. The hats that you don't wear, it does not mean nothing to God. The cigarettes that you smoke, listen to me, it does not mean nothing to God. The paper that you do, it don't defer from what God has for your life. I promise you, right. you might be sorting in your life a little bit when you do better. Yes, you need to stop coming out and do a little bit. I understand. Some of us need to stop eating. I understand. We all ain't skinny and muscular like me. I understand. <laughs> we can all do better in our health. Absolutely. But that does not <laughs> erase our name out of the Lamb's Book of Life. No, that does not qualify me or disqualify me for heaven. Let me just go ahead and say this. This will burst some bubbles too because you ain't been taught this. But let me just tell you what the Bible says. You can be a born again believer and have a bad day and go drink you a, a beer. That does not erase your name out of the Lamb's Book of Life. That does not disqualify you for heaven. No, that's not what you need to go and practice. No, that's not what you need to go and do. Yes, you just acted out of character. Yes, you need to go and repent for what you've just done. But that does not change God's mind about who you are. That does not disqualify you for heaven. I'm just here to tell you it's the blood of Jesus that qualifies a man to go to heaven. Amen. 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 No, we don't practice sin. No, repent, change from your ways, do better. But just one out of character act does not make God change his mind about who you are. Let me just go ahead and say this while we're on the subject. If you've not been born again, you're still in that filthy mess. You're still doing things you ought not to do. You've not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You've not accepted him as your Lord and Savior. You've not applied the blood to your life, and you're not on your way to heaven. Let me just tell you this right real quick. That does not change God's mind about who you are. He still loves you, and you might not have accepted him as his Savior yet, but he still calls you his son. He still calls you his daughter. He's just waiting on you to give your life to him Amen. so that you can spend eternity with him. Yeah. That does not change who God says about who you are. Yeah. In the current season that you're in right now, though you're a total mess. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 He still loves you. Yeah. Yeah. What Angel was halfway saying before she left about the prodigal son. The prod he's not made his way home, but the father went out and met him. Why would the father go and meet him? Because he still loved his boy. Yeah. 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 He still loved his son. Yeah. It don't make sense, it doesn't. It ain't fair. It ain't. Why would he? I have no idea. Why would he love me? Who knows? But I ask God. myself that all the time. God, why do you love me? I'm a mess. You ever look in the mirror and say, God, why could you love something like me? Yeah. Let me just go ahead and do this real quick. Like, If you're part of the worship team, can you stand back up? Those that come up here and sing every day. I'm going to put us all on the spot real quick. Chris, you, Chris is part of it. He's being standing up. 
Let me just go ahead and say this for you guys that just didn't know. And, and forgive me if I say something that's out of order to you guys that's standing up. You're looking at somebody, Teresa, raise your hand, that, that lived the streets, that, that put stuff in her arms, yeah. that, that snorted stuff, right? Shot it up, done the filthy things of the world. Yeah. Corey, I, I know she's a pot smoker. I don't know what else she used to do. Anything else you want to say? <laughs> pot smoker, Corey. That's what, that's what she used to be. Uh, fire calls. Alcohol. Alcohol. She, she's an alcoholic. She was a drunkard. She's a, she's a party animal. Chris, raise your hand back there. What was you? I was, uh, you didn't have enough bags, probably. Oh, Chris was a bad old dude. <laughs> he walks into town and everybody got nervous. <laughs> Chrissy, you do the, let me say it. You, raise your hand. If you don't know, you're looking at an ex-witch right there. You used to witch, doctor, you do all that stuff. Set free, amen, on our way to heaven. That's who she used to be. That's who they used to be. Kenny, raise your hand, Kenny. Drunkard. He used to drink at Oakley. Huh? And stuck on porn. And stuck on pornography. I mean, y'all give them a hand clap. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Mommy, she's been perfect since the day I was born. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Amen. Y'all give all of them a hand clap. You're so funny. <laughs> 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 Herbie's over here saying wine. She said wine. Uh -uh. She introduced me to my first drink of wine. I did not. No. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Y'all give them a hand clap as they sit back down. Why would I do something like I'm not embarrassed? No, I'm just telling you that while they were stuck in the pornography and the drinking and the smoking weed and the party and the shooting up and the snoring and the, and the bad old cat back there, Chris, and the wine old Tammy and the ex witch Chrissy, when, when all this stuff, God did not change his mind of who they was. It did not define who they was in God. That's right. That one season of their life before salvation, God didn't look and say, they're too unclean for me. I don't want them. God never looked down from the heavens and said, no, they're, not, they're not good enough. I don't want them. I don't want them because they've messed up too much or they drunk too much or it's too much porn or they, they was just a bad old guy or they done whatever. I do not want them. He never said that. <laughs> Amen. They still laughing on the, the drinking. <laughs> Something you want to share at the church? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I tell you how graceful God is. I tell you how graceful God is. Go ahead. God is. I've been saved for a long time, me and my husband. And I tell you right now, never in my life had I done pop. Didn't even know what the stuff looked like until last year at Thanksgiving when I went to my son's and I tried it. What? But you know what? He still loves me. He still loves me. Amen. Amen. Y'all give her a hand clap. I know mean, she still loves you. Does he give us a license? Absolutely not. We don't have a license. We're going to do that stuff. What I'm saying is, before you be put in your right mind, he still looks and says, there's hope for you. There's a calling for you. There's a purpose for you. Before y'all come to the altar, he looked down and said, no, it's my son. That's my daughter. I'm waiting on the day that they surrender their life to me because I love them. Amen. Amen. There's scripture for all everything I'm telling you. Y'all remember that message? Pastor Mark preached about blind Bartimaeus, the Bible, and the people called him blind. But his name was not blind Bartimaeus. His name was Bartimaeus. Amen. But people labeled him as blind Bartimaeus. Amen. I'm glad that the woman that the people called unclean from the, the issue of blood, Jesus called her healed. I'm glad that the woman that was filthy, that the people drug her out naked and threw her at the feet of Jesus and said, look, we just caught her in the act of adultery. Jesus picked her up and said, no, that's my daughter. That is my baby girl. Go and sit on more see church. Listen, I, I, we got a church. But church wants to look at people and, and say, no, you're unclean from this building. Get cleaned up and then come in. Church wants to label you. The religious Pharisees want to label you and say, no, you're too nasty. You're too, you need to dress better. Go out there and dress better. Then come in. Go get you a pretty suit jacket. Then come in. Then come to the house. Well, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus picked her up out of that mess and said, that is my daughter right where she's at. He said, that is a healed woman right where she's at. That man that was blind, he, has, he can see right now right where he's that. Amen. Amen. Jesus don't qualify us to get clean. He cleans us. Amen. He cleans us. Nathan, we can't clean ourselves. Right. I've tried. A bath don't work. <laughs> Even once a week, Chris, it don't work. No matter how, it's not the outward. 
Jesus told the Pharisees, this is what I'm talking about right here. Catch what I'm telling you. This ain't wrote down, so this is all free, all nuggets. All, I won't even charge you an offering for this one. What Jesus told the church, what Jesus told the Pharisees that come against him, they come with their pretty robes, their, 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 their outfits on, their, their, their prayer shawls around their neck and all that stuff. And Jesus said, this is the issue with you. He said, you're cleaning the cup on the outside. It looks beautiful on the outside like a person cleans a cup. But on the inside, you're like a, a tomb. You're like a dead man's sepulcher. You look like a tomb on the inside. Outside, you look beautifully dressed up. On the inside, you're dead. On the outside, the cup is good on the inside. It's molded and greasy and nasty. Nobody wants to drink out of that cup. Yeah. He said, but on the outside, you look good. How many knows it's not the outward transformation, but the inward? It has nothing to do with the outward. Jesus will work on the outward. He cleanses us first on the inward. Amen. He cleanses us on the inward. 58 says this. He said, and, and he did not believe, or he did not many works in that city because of the city's unbelief. I just want to go ahead and tell you that it does not matter. If God Himself shows up, if you don't believe, He can't do not one thing for you. Yeah. If God's praise, there was enough anointing a while ago when they come to the altar to hit this place yeah. that it could arose a dead man. Amen. But if you don't believe in that anointing, it won't do nothing for you. If you don't believe that you can stretch out and receive the healing that he has for you, you won't receive that healing. If you don't believe that he can set you free from alcohol, you will never get set free from alcohol. If you don't believe he can set you free from pornography, I promise you, you'll never be set free from pornography. If you don't believe he'll set you, he, can, he has the ability to set you free from that sin lifestyle that we live in, I promise you, he will not set you, you will not be able to be set free from that sin lifestyle that we live in. You got to believe. Amen. 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 Do you know what was so exciting about them healing crusades back in the day that you heard the tents and A.A. A. Allen and Smith Wigglesworth and them men of God that come through cities and towns? Do you know the reason they was able to do stuff like that? Believe. Believe people. Because the people's faith was so built up that God would heal people through them men. Yeah. That God, that the people's faith was so built up in God through them men that they would come with the expectation that God would heal them. Yeah. And when you would show up with an expectation that God will meet me right where I'm at and heal me right where, my at, where I'm at. And if I go and get in the presence of God, I will leave set free and healed. Then people would show up with that mindset, Chris, that when I get there, I will leave healed. Amen. Do you know what happened? They left healed. They left healed. Amen. People in wheelchairs getting up. Hospital beds getting up. People with canes and, and crutches getting up and leaving them things at the altar. People with blindness. The blindness fall like scales. People that was dead laying hearing aids and stuff at the altar. Why? Because their faith was built up in God. Amen. They believed. Why do you think the Word of God, and I just want to talk for a second before we keep screaming. Why do you think that the Word of God says that uh, it's impossible to please God without faith? Because you can't pray. Amen. Without faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Yeah. Yeah. Without faith in Him, it's impossible him, for Him to do anything in our life. Yeah. This is a proven fact right now. Yeah. That the Bible said scriptures before this and scriptures after this, that Jesus would go around doing miracles, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils. Amen. 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 But the Word of God said that when He got to a place that they did not have belief in Him, He couldn't do any works at all. Amen. Did Jesus change? No. Did healing virtue that he packed with him change? No. Did it change his identity as the son of God in flesh? Did it change who he was? That he was the literally, the word of God said that he was the word of God in flesh walking around. Did it change that? No. Not one bit. But the Bible said because when he showed up to an area that had little belief in him or in God, he couldn't do any works at all. Amen. Amen. So why is it important that, that God begins to build our faith up, Chris, in certain areas in the Bible? Why is it important that if a man comes and don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit, that God begins to put teachings across the pulpit of gifts of the Spirit to build your faith up in that? Yeah. Yeah. Because you can argue what man says all day, but you can't argue what the Word of God says. Right. So he begins to put teachings and, 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 and discipleship in front of you. To build your faith upon what God's saying. Yeah, right. Why people don't believe in prophecies until they get a prophet in front of them and says, Let me just tell you what God said of your life. Yeah. And you tell them everything from A to Z, and they're like, Oh my God, God just read my mouth. Yeah, then you believe. Why, why does he do, do that? To build your faith up. Yeah. Let me just go ahead and teach this. I've already taught it one, one more time. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the nine spiritual gifts, one of the gifts is the gift uh, of wisdom, the other one, the gift of knowledge. He'll give you a. Uh, 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 He'll give somebody a, a word of knowledge about you that you and you alone already knows. Yeah. To confirm that they got that man here is from God. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, come on. Amen. Amen. So I didn't know that, that Kenny used to be a drunkard. Well, let me just say this. I'll just stop that. Let me just say Jennifer smoked weed whenever it was. And nobody else knew that. And 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 I come up to her and I come up to her to pray for her and say, oh, we're not proud of it. You stop smiling. Hey, I repeat it. Come in the liver! I'm she's not smiling because she liked it. She's smiling because she's been free. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm smiling because I'm free. The yeah. devil can't attempt me with it no more. That's right. So, anyways, <laughs> nobody knows that Jenny done that. But when she comes up for prayer, let me just teach you something real quick before we move on. She comes up for prayer and God drops it in my spirit and says, Hey, God showed me that you smoked weed this day and this is what happened. She's like, Oh my God, nobody knew that. How did you know that? God must have told you. Automatically, she has her ear inclined to what I'm saying now. Yeah. Yeah. Because her faith has been built up in God through what I'm telling her. That's right. So then God will begin to give me a word of wisdom, another gift of the Spirit. And I'll then say, well, let me tell you what God says is going to happen tomorrow or, or next week or the next season of your life. Get ready or this is what's going to happen. So she has faith in that word that, that whatever I said is going to come to pass because God will build her faith up in what I done told her. Yeah. Does that make sense? Amen. So people, God will give people a word to build their faith up in Him or He'll give them a nugget to build their faith up in this area. Then He'll... Advance them in, 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 in that same area in a deeper measure. Their faith is now built up. The capacity of their faith in the spirit realm is built up to be able to handle the weight of what's coming. But he had to first get them to a level to build them up Amen. in him. Jesus was God in flesh, doing miracles everywhere he went. But the lack of the belief in the people, he couldn't do miracles. Amen? Couldn't do miracles. Couldn't do miracles. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, if you have your Bibles, you can turn there very quickly. This is where I was going. Uh, the, whole, the whole message is about this, and I, I said it last service. Y'all doing okay? Yes, amen. Matthew 5 and 12, just a couple pages over. I'm, I'm honest, I'm not going to read it much longer at all. Uh, 12 says, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted uh, they the prophets which were before you. And, and this is what the word of God says. You were the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its uh, savor. Y'all remember I halfway quoted that last service? Yeah. Yeah. And I said flavor. Yeah. Flavor, flavor. flavor. <laughs> have lost its savor. Wherewith shall it be salted? It is. There are no good for nothing. But to be cast out. And to be trodden under foot of men. You're the light of the world, a city uh, that is set on a hill. It cannot be hid. Neither do a man light his candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it will give light unto them that are in the house. Mm -hmm. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is Amen. in heaven. Amen. That scripture, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It's good for nothing. It's pretty much pointless. Good to see you, man, woman of God. Y'all give them a hand clap. They made it. Made it back. Did we win? We won. Yeah. Right. Woo. I was going to withdraw us because y'all weren't here. Jeannie was going to withdraw us for other reasons. <laughs> y'all yeah, can't uh, believe nothing he tells you. But, <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. Hey. Let's focus. Focus. We they don't you do it. The word of God says that you're the salt of the earth, but the salt has lost its savor. What's it good for? If I if I'm gonna get a big juicy cheeseburger and I'm gonna put salt on, I'm gonna expect to taste the salt. Yeah. yeah. That's the whole purpose of salt and the cheeseburger. Come on. If it ain't got no savor to it, it ain't got no taste at all. You throw it away. What's the purpose in it? Yeah. Amen. And that's what the writer is saying, it's what the word's saying. You're supposed to be the salt of the earth. Let me break it down very quickly, then we'll, we'll take off preaching and we'll pray. What does to add value mean? Notice in, in, in Matthew chapter 5 in these scriptures, salt adds value or it's also used for preserving. Yeah. Well, there's more than one reason for salt. Yeah. It's to add a, a flavor, it's to add a value to something that's already good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it's to, to preserve something. Amen. You ever can something? You use salt to help preserve, right? Yeah. Some type, some type of salt. Crap. You use it to preserve, or you use salt for value. Now, the adding value, I just, I like definitions. 
Value means to regard that something is held to deserve. The importance of something, the worth of something, or usefulness of something. So salt is to add a value of something that's already good. Big old deer burger is pretty good already, but you add salt to it, it adds value to that taste already. I love it because everybody's like, <laughs> yeah, baby. It's already good, but you add, and it's better. Amen, or whatever you like salt on. It, it's not that it's not good, but it, it adds value to the flavor already. To preserve means to continue doing something or trying to do something, even though it is difficult or it takes a long time. I like that beautiful definition. To preserve something means to continue to do something <coughs> or to try to do something even though it's difficult and takes a long time. Let me tell you the reason that the church is here in Bradshaw, West Virginia. <coughs> Let me tell you why this church is here in this city, in this area. It's because God's called us to preserve this region. It's because He has called us to preserve this land. It's because He's called us, Wes, to preserve these people. It's because God has called us the importance, even though it's difficult or it may even take a long time, that definition. He said, but He is called to, to, to bring us here because we add value to the region. Yeah. That's the whole purpose of the value. Not that the region's not good. It's already good. Good. But he has dropped this church here in this region to add value to something that's already good, to make that something better. Yeah. Amen. He said, You're the salt of the world, but if you ain't got no flavor, you ain't got no savor, it's useless. I throw it out. He said, But I've called you to be a church, a city lit, see it in city, up on the hill so that you can see it from miles away. I've called you to be the salt that you add flavor wherever it is that you go. Amen. You add a certain taste that something yeah. needs. It's already good. But when you show up, something that you carry makes that something good already more, much more better. That you make that something that's good, you make it great. Amen. So God's called you for that reason. Amen. He said, you're the salt. Why are you? Because you're called to preserve and you're called to add flavor. Yeah. Savor. Yeah. Called to add value. Taste purpose. Taste purpose. Usefulness. The important, the worth of something. Amen. Amen. He said, you're salt because you're worth something. Let me just go ahead and say it this way for you guys that's kind of new here. You've never been here. Or you've never heard this. But most of us have heard this over and over and over. Because I want us to, to wake up and know that we're worth something. Yeah. That God has called us for something. Yeah. And I want this church to know, and everybody that's here to know, that you are caught. I honestly believe, I don't just halfway say stuff behind the pulpit. Unless we're joking about, you know. But when it gets serious moment, I'm, I'm here to tell you the truth. I believe with everything in me, Casey, that every single one of us, God has called us, Chris, for such a time as this, to be that bloodline breaker in our family. Yeah. I believe God has called us to be that man, to be that woman yeah. that stands in the gap and says, God, I've wasted this many years, but here I am. Now I'm a salt that's got savor. Now I'm a salt that's got that taste. Now I'm that person, God, that's going to bring my whole family in. My whole family yeah. was good, but when I showed up, I added value. My whole family was good. My God, but when I showed up and I got my life right with Jesus Christ, I added something that my family never had before. Amen. My bloodline's been waiting on me. My generation's been waiting on me. Generations back. Dad didn't know, but he's been waiting on me. Papa Charlie didn't know, it, but he's been waiting on us. They, they didn't know it. Elijah didn't know it, but they've been waiting on us. Yeah. yeah. Your family's been waiting on you. Yeah. That bridge in the gap. Yeah. Teresa's family had no idea that. They didn't know they needed her the way that they need her. Jennifer's family did not know that they needed her the way that they needed her. Rafford, listen to me, man of God. Your family did not know that they need you like they need you yeah. now. But yeah. so when you show up in the fullness, yeah. in the right mind, no, not that you're perfect. No, you'll never be perfect. No. You'll never be perfect. But when you show up after salvation, you add something. Yeah. Amen. You add something. You know, now you show up to the family reunion in a, in a brand new likeness in Christ Jesus. Now you show up and you got a brand new flavor, a brand new taste to you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I said family reunion. That's the most time we see each other. <laughs> we talk about you the entire time. Y'all come on. We have a good time. Uh, By that time, neither one of us killed killed anything. <laughs> uh, don't judge us, Scott. Just their legs. If you don't know, Scott's done tag that on a 13 point. <laughs> Lord bless him. Bless him. <laughs> We're not all that blessed, God. Don't be boasting. I see him be boasting back there. No, he's not. It's all he's, God. It's all, it's all God. God. Amen. Amen. But it's when we get our minds right with God, Casey. It's when that the world has done threw us out. Yeah. That Jesus picks us up. That woman that was unfilthy. She didn't have no savor in her salt. Her salt was tasteless. It didn't have no, no taste to it. 
But Jesus seen the value on the inside of her. Picked her up, put her in her right mind. Didn't call her unclean, but what he said, he said, no, you're my daughter. Now the flavor that you have, that savor that you have, that taste that you have, that value, that worth that you have, go to the region that you was called to. You call to preserve the land. Preserve means doing something and trying to do something, even though it's difficult, it takes a long time. Yeah. You're preserving the meat. You're preserving something. From corruption. From corruption. Yeah. It, 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 though it might take a long time, is what that definition said. Sometimes we get weary in our well doing, but that scripture, that definition just said, don't give up because it may take a long time to preserve something. Amen. 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 You call to be the salt of the earth. You're called to be the salt, salt without any savor. Wherewith should it be salted? It, it just throw it away. It ain't worth nothing. He said, you're the light of the world. The city set on a hill. It can't be hid. Neither do a man light a candle. It's goofy. Light a candle and put it under a bushel. Put it under your bed. Put it under a table. That's dumb. Who does that? I know one. They just try to do an church job. We don't do that no more. <laughs> We've never done that. <laughs> What's the purpose of lighting a candle and hiding it? You light a candle to be able to see where you're going. He said it's exactly who you've called to be. You're supposed to be a candle in a dark area. Though it was dark when the candle got lit, they could see because of you. They could see because of you. The people couldn't see. They was walking around blind because you wasn't lit at that time. But thanks be to God, we're lit now. Thanks be to God, we, we're lit now. We're like a city that's set on a hill that cannot be hid. You're lit. You're that candle that's lit. And people can grab you and walk around and be able to see where they're going now. Amen. They said it's goofy to hide the, to light a candle and just hide it. That, that's not what we do. You light a candle and you pack around and be able to see where you're going. We're not done. We know what that means. Amen. He said you, you don't do that. Neither does a man uh, that you light into the house. So let your light shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. What's the whole purpose and all this? To glorify the Father which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. I want to build your faith up, and I told you I'm not going to be very long at all. I want to build your faith up very quickly. We're going to separate y'all. I'm sorry. Y'all go over here and sit. <laughs> it's okay to have joy in church. You can laugh. We're not going to song you. Not this time. How many knows you can laugh in church? Yeah. And not feel scared to laugh. Yeah. I've been in church and I'm so scared to sneeze because I, I just figured it's going to. Don't heal her. You got COVID? Get out. <laughs> Y'all laughing, but. Real, you got COVID? Oh, get out, demon. I'm, I'm thankful for it. But you guys can laugh. Uh, what was we? Building faith in God. I want to remind you that it's okay to have faith in men, but know that the men get used by God. Yeah. You don't have faith in man alone because man will fail you. You have faith in God. But God uses man to heal. God uses man to speak. God uses man to help deliver. Yes. So God will begin to build faith up in men to be used by him. Mm -hmm. So if you don't think I'm worth anything, and, and you know you wouldn't even come here. You don't think I hear from God. You don't think I, I can read a, a scripture. Any of that. It would be pointless you being here. Amen. If you don't think God's in the house. It would be pointless you coming. But we come because we know God's here. We come because we know God's speaking. We come because we know that God's speaking to the, to the church and the leadership and uh, everybody in here. God's speaking and using. The whole purpose of what God does in a, in a church, in a, in a believer, in a believer's life first, he begins to build their faith up in him. That he is God, obviously. And that's the whole purpose in Isaiah 58 we read about in Job chapter, what was it, 2 we read about. To, to build our faith up in God. To do things the correct way to build our faith up in who He is, Amen. That's what that's what the, the reason it is. So when an individual case he gets their faith built up in God, Kenny, then they can come to a church like this and as a corporate body, a corporate man. Then the corporate, the church, the, the whole church begins to build their faith up in God, Amen. Amen. So that when we build our faith up in God, when somebody comes and sick and needs healed, our faith is built up in Him already. That we know when we pray, quoting scriptures, believe for the blood, that that person's going to leave healed. Amen. Amen. So what God does is he builds his faith up in his people for him. That he will get the glory. Mm -hmm. So that when somebody comes, they won't be in unbelief, but they'll believe in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you know it's, it's one of the greatest acts of, of faith, EJ, that a person can ever do? Please hear me. I'm about to close. Seriously. The greatest act of faith that any person can do is when they come up to the altar expecting salvation. Amen. 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 
The greatest act of faith is when somebody gets up out of their seat, comes to the altar, and believes that God's going to meet them there and, and, and set them in the right mind and save them from a devil's hell. Yeah. That's the greatest act of faith anybody can have. Yeah. So why not have faith that God can heal you? If the same God is enough God to save you, set you in your right mind, pull you up out of the devil's hell, set you in your right place, in the right path, and on your way to heaven, why is he not enough God to put money in your pocket? Why is he not enough God to break poverty off your life? Why is he not enough God to set you free and deliver? You from that demon that has you bound up for so many years. If Amen. he's enough God to save us, God, put me in my right mind on my way to heaven. Bring, wrote my name down in the Lamb's book of life and calls me my, his son. Why don't I have enough faith that God will meet me when I say, God, deliver me Amen. from that demon that has me down and depressed and oppressed and, and, and I'm just so sad, God. Why don't I not believe that he's enough God to meet me in church when I go and I'm bound up with depression that he'll meet me right where I'm at and set me free. Why don't I not believe that he's enough God that when I'm bound up with anxiety, he'll come set me in my right Amen. mind and say, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, son, but power, love, and a sound mind. Uh, why do I not believe that he's enough God to set me in the right place of healing? Amen. If he's a right enough God to save me Amen. from my sins. Amen. Amen. You remember what the, the, the man said? He said, I believe. Help my unbelief. Yeah. Yes. It's the unbelief part, Casey. It's the unbelief that we have. The reason that we're, we're bound up in areas. That God ain't enough God to set me free from my Mountain Dew. One, I don't want to get rid of him. Yeah. And it's a big problem. Yeah. Most of the time I'm gonna just talk on my Mountain Dew. I won't go on nothing else. I don't want stones thrown at me. Then if I like my Mountain Dew enough, why would God take it when I'm saying, Oh, give me more? I'll go buy another four cases and drink by the end of the week. Yeah. Go give me some more. I want some more of it. Don't take my little Debbie's. I like them things. You know, so you know God's not gonna take something if I'm in covenant with it. Come on. Come on. God's not gonna take anything from me if I'm hugging up to it and in covenant with that thing. And if we like the thing that we're doing, God's not going to take it from us. Yep. Amen. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. But He's enough God to take it. But are we enough people just to, yeah, you can have it, God. I believe you can take it if I just give it to you. And half the time we don't give it to Him. Yeah. Half the time we hug up to that sickness and say, no, I like the attention. Yeah. I'm just, we was in church and a guy had to give it, get, and I'm not saying you like attention if you're sick. By no means, that ain't what I just said. Well, he was in a guy, a guy in a church once, and the guy gave a testimony, and he said that God was healing. Like every single person that come up, they was just leaving healed. Testimonies from doctors left healed. He said this man come up, or it might, might even be a woman, but they went to pray, and it, that person stopped him and said, "What he said? If you heal me, that means they'll take my check. <laughs> so just heal me just a little bit, yeah. but not enough to take my check, and refuse the healing." Now, I'm just telling you that some people don't want to be all the way healed because, you know, yeah. they like the teacher or they like the, the check or whatever. Maybe. I don't have yeah. But sometimes we're in covenant with some things in our life. We just need to release and say, no, God, I don't want this no more. You can take it. Come on. I, I don't want that perversion no more. You can take it. It, it don't do no good when I like watching the pornography and I pull that up every day. I'm in covenant with that thing. But it's when I begin to cut it off and cut the head of the snake off and say, no, God, I'm going to come against that. I don't want that no more. I don't want that. You know, one of the very biggest, hardest things I've ever done in my life was try to break that pornography spirit off my own life. Very hard. Amen. Right. One of the hardest things. I felt like a drug addict that was going through withdrawals. I, you don't believe me. It's okay. I promise you, I would lay in bed and come in cold sweats and just pour out my body because I was in such a covenant with that thing. It's a fact. <coughs> you have to come out of covenant with something and believe that God will move in that area to be able to heal you in the way that you deserve to be healed. The Bible says that he did not many miracles in that area because of their unbelief in him. It's only when I wanted to come off drugs that I, I released that covenant and say, no, God, heal me and set me free. I believe that you're enough God to pull the drugs off me and heal me and set me in my right mind. What that just did, that built your faith up in the Lord Jesus Christ that he's God enough to heal you from that disease, yeah. that drug. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. How can I ever think that he'll deliver me from drinking if I don't have enough faith that he can do it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh man, God, I would stop drinking my Mountain Dew, but I know as soon as I do, I'm having busting headaches. Yes. Amen. Hey, I, I'm telling you, what am I doing? I'm justifying why I'm keeping it. Yeah. Plus, I like it. Yeah. I'll be delivered one day. 
Half a million babies. I like it. But what I'm saying is this. God is God regardless of our faith in Him or not. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, forevermore. He's never changing. He's gone on the throne. Heaven is his throne. Earth is his footstool. And his very voice, pillars shake, mountains melt like wax. He is God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Y'all get how big God is? The only being that's omnipresent, every person, everywhere at one time, it's God. That's not the devil. He can't do that. He's not ever at once. He can't be at my house in case he's house the same night. It's impossible. I promise. His demons can't be, he can't. But God has been omnipresent. He's everywhere at one time. Does that make sense? Yes. That's how big God is. Yes. Big enough to know the hairs that's numbered left on my head. Three. Three. <laughs> Four. He's big enough God to know the stars in the heavens. He's big enough God to know every star that falls to the What well, I'm, I'm just telling you how big God is. We, we see the 50 cent that's in our bill for each other. We're like, my God, I'm broke. No, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills and hills thereof. He's still God. Amen. That does not dictate who he is because we seem like we're broke. We might be broke at that moment, but we're not broke because he's our father. Amen. Everything he has, we have. Amen. And when we need it, it's ours. Amen. That's how big God is. But the issue, EJ, is we, we begin to judge God on our earthly mindset and says, God, you can't do that stuff. It's too big for you. You can't heal me from this because cancer is a big word. It's bigger than you, God. Amen, bro. I, I can't be healed of this poverty spirit, God, because I'm always broke. My family's always been broke. And, and, and money's bigger than you, God. Come on. I can't be healed of, of, of whatever it may be that I need to be healed of. Because whatever it is that I'm facing, that mountain looks so big in front of me, and we begin to tell the mountain that God's small. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Amen. 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 Abraham went up that big, huge mountain. I can imagine how big he said that mountain really is. How many days it took, and, and what was it, three days to go up that mountain? Is that what it was? Three, three days to go up that mountain? Two, you say two or three? Two, two days to go up that mountain. It's a long time to go up that mountain. <laughs> how big that mountain is. You start down here, go up the top of that way, it's a big old mountain. If you're going to walk it, two days worth. Two days worth at least. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dragging it here is even longer. Yeah. But it, we begin to tell God how big our mountain is and tell the mountain that you're bigger than my God. And we wake up, now I'm not condemning nobody. I'm trying to help us tonight. We wake up with the mindset that I'm going through this depression. I'm going to wake up, I'm going to go through depression again today because depression is bigger than God. I woke up with 50 cents in my pocket. I'm, I'm going to just stay broke because money's bigger than what God is. Amen. 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 I wake up with the mentality that whatever it is that I'm going through, that, that, that mindset, that sickness that's in my mind that's telling me whatever it may be that I'm facing, it's bigger than who God is. Amen. Amen. That's a fact. We've done it many times. Somebody's being mean to first thing we do. It's God that person's bigger than you are. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And we 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 position ourselves. Now we're still talking about unbelief in Jesus. We position ourselves just like his hometown did. And his hometown says, you know what? This is just the carpenter's son. This is Mary's boy. This is their brother. This is their uh that's their his sisters over there. That's that carpenter's boy that we always knew about. And if we're not careful, we'll wake up day by day and say, you know what? Everybody in my family's had this sickness. Everybody in my family, somebody in my bloodline has had cancer. So I'm going to wake up every day with that cancer that's lingering over my life. And I'm going to say the cancer is bigger than God. Everybody in my family, I've heard it all, uh, not all my life, but all of my pastor life. Uh, every person in my family has worked and just provided and just, uh, what is that? Payday to payday. Payday to payday. Payday to payday. It's a curse lie from the devil. Payday to payday. Payday to payday. And every person in my life has lived under this curse, God. So I wake up with the mentality that I'm going to work. Payday to payday and stay broke all my life. Yeah. Yeah. And we tell money that he's bigger than God and God's bigger than money. No, well, we ain't just talking about money, but that's part of the issues of life. Come on. Amen. 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 
We wake up daily and we come in covenant, just like Angel Thanks. said. My buddy Jonathan, he said, I woke up this morning and he said, I felt this pain attached to my either my hip or my rib. He said, I was in so much pain. And he said, I wanted to so bad. It's the same guy that makes my anointing oil. He said, I wanted to so bad. Just go, oh my God, that hurts so bad. And come in covenant with that. He said, but the Spirit of the Lord just checked me. And he said, I didn't come in covenant. He said, but what I done? He said, I rebuked you. He said, I rebuked that sickness and said, no, you don't have authority over me because I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. And he Amen. said, what that thing realized? He said, I knew the blood. I knew the scripture. I knew the power of life and death is in my tongue. And I didn't come in covenant, but I cut that sucker off. And he said, immediately that sickness, that pain left me because it knew that I knew the power of the blood. It knew that I knew the power of covenant. I, it knew that I know what's it? A demon, a spirit, a sickness, whatever it may be. It knew that it had no power over me because I knew the power of the blood. Amen. Demons bothering you in your house. You're a born again Christian. It has no right to be there unless you give it a legal right. If you've not given a legal right, you have the power and the ability to cast that sucker out and say, no, you don't have the right to be here. Amen. Oftentimes we tell them spirits how big God is and God that them spirits are bigger than he is. Amen. Amen. Nightmares is bigger than God. God's smaller than nightmares. Amen. Amen. He couldn't do many miracles there because they're unbelief in him. <laughs> he couldn't do many. Why do you think, and I'm about to close right here. Why do you think that when Jesus did the Sermon on the Mount, he just, he never really preached. I guess he did, but the Bible says he taught for three days. He taught scripture. Amen. He taught them for three days. They didn't eat, they didn't drink. To the point that they did the miracle of the, the, the fish and the loaves. That's that story. Because he didn't want to see them on their way hungry. Because they might faint by the way. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Chris said he taught for three days the scriptures. What did he do? He built their faith up in God for three days. He built their faith up in God. And after the faith has been built up, then the miracles came. Yeah. Amen. It was after the teachings, after the, the services, after the talking. Then the miracles came of the fish and the loaves. Yeah. Then the miracle come of quiet the storm. Then the miracles came after. He was building their faith up in the scripture, in him. Yeah. Come on. In his word. Mm -hmm. And this is one thing we ain't get, we don't get taught a lot. We ain't really got taught, you know, growing up. But faith in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. The power that the blood itself carries. Yeah. yeah. And Leviticus says that the, 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 the life is in the blood. So Jesus' life over us is through his blood. So we plead the blood. We plead the blood for our healing. We plead the blood for our deliverances. We cover ourselves. We plead the blood, whatever you want to call it, for our deliverances. We plead the blood for our family. When I say our family has been waiting on us to show up and get right with him, it's because now that sickness, that, let me just say it this way, cancer started with my great-grandpa, went down to my grandpa, went down to my daddy, and it got to me. When it got to me, it met the blood of Jesus. Because why? The blood carries the life of Jesus. So when it gets to me, it meets the blood. It don't meet me. It meets his blood. And when it meets his blood, cancer has to bow down at his blood. When poverty got introduced to my family, from my grandpa, from my dad, to me, when it gets to Elijah, and poverty can't be over his head. Why? Because the blood is over him. Blood even conquers poverty. That money problem, it conquers that. So when it comes in comes contact with him, it comes in contact with the blood. Amen. And it can't overtake the blood. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah. So the sicknesses that we face, it, yeah, it's good that it comes in contact with his blood. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It comes in contact with his blood. Yeah. And when it comes in contact with his blood, every sickness, every, every, you remember in Revelation it says one day every knee's going to bow, one day every toe is going to confess. That's one day all that's going to happen. It ain't happened yet. One day it will happen. But I'm here to tell you right now, this night, this moment, this region, this this season that we're in, October the 23rd at 9-11 p.m. on Wednesday, 2023, let me just remind somebody tonight that every spirit that comes in contact with the blood of Jesus, 24, not 23, 2024 and 23 <laughs> and 22 and 25. But 2024, I just want to remind you that everything that you've dealt with in your life, everything that you're going through, every sickness, every torment, every demon that won't shut its big mouth, every anxiety, every depression, every sickness, every stronghold, every poverty spirit, everything that you ever face that's not good and not from God. When it comes in contact with the blood of Jesus that's upon your life, it has to bow down tonight. Yes. It has to bow down, Casey. It can't open its big mouth 
when you show up with the blood and you bleed the blood and you come in contact, you come with the name of Jesus and say, no, I show up not by me. I show up not by my mind, not by my power, but by, by the Spirit of the Lord. When I show up that way and the blood of Jesus shows up that way, everything that's chaotic in your life, every storm has to bow. Amen. Every storm has to shut its big mouth. Amen. 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 Let me tell you something that works. When you when you begin to pray over your finances and tithe correctly, give correctly, you might not have 50 cents in your pocket, but I promise you, at the time and the place that you need it, you'll have a check in the mail. At the time and the place that you need it, somebody will slip you $100. At the time and the place you need it, you'll look and you'll cash that for then. You're like, my God, where'd that come from? Why? Because you've been sowing, you've been faithful, you've been faithful when you're giving, you've been faithful when you're sowing. You're breaking poverty off your life. So breaking poverty opens blessings. Yes. Amen. 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 Removes curses. Yes. Every sickness. Every sickness. Every sickness will stop when it meets you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 When the faith is in him and we believe that he can do it. Yes. Amen. And that he will do it. It's when we have enough faith. And then, let me just say this, not stolen stones over my own life as well. Half of the reason of why we're still under so much chaoticness in our life is because we don't know what he even said. That's right. How can, I, how can I fight if I don't know what to fight with? Come on. Amen. How can I cut the head of any serpent if I don't know what to cut him with? Come on. Yeah. Only scripture I know is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the only scripture I know. And I'm gonna go try to cast out anxiety with that. How's that work? Come on. Come on. I'm trying to I'm trying to break poverty, but I don't know how to break it. Bible. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. How does that work? Yeah, that may work a little bit, but it no. When I've got anxiety, it's so heavy. When I when I've got fleshly battles, it's so heavy. I don't know how to fight. I don't know what to go back to. I don't know what to go in this and pull out. I don't even know what to type in on Google to, to pull up the right scripture for me. That's why half of us use now anyway. Yeah. But but I don't know I don't know how to fight. Yeah. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to fast. I don't know how to pray. I don't know what the gifts of the spirits are. I don't know what the fruit of the spirits. I don't know anything about God. How do I know? Amen. 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 Oh, it's all the word. And coming to church. Sitting in class. Yeah, come on. It's what lets you go through your eyes and ears. Mom said, let's go. What did you say to the eyes and ears? The eye gate, the ear gate. The eye gate, the ear gate. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's scripture. And it's how do I fight each day if I don't know how to fight? You remember when, when the tempter came and the word of God said that when Jesus was exhausted from fasting 40 days a night, the tempter showed up, began to tempt him. What did he fight him with? The word. He, he, pre, he, he, he said, you know, it's written in the Word. Yeah. The, the, the Bible said three times, he said, oh, it's written here, and it's written here, and it's written here. Yeah. He never come at him with an argument of attitude. He didn't say, oh, shut your big mouth. You're dumb. You're stupid. You can't hurt me. You can't do this. Try that. See how it works. You don't know how to fight. Jesus said, no, when he shows up with this, no, let me tell you what the Word says, devil. The Word says this over my life. So I'm, fight, I'm fighting this stuff and you don't know how to fight. And you're like, my God, I keep fighting fleshly. I'm trying to tell this. And, and the word, I, don't know what that, I don't know that the word says. Though I leave in the flesh, I do not war after the flesh for the weapon of my warfare is not carnal minded. But it's mighty through God to so pulling down a stronghold. Casting down every imagination. How do I cast down imaginations in my mind that the devil's given me? I don't know no scripture about imagination. I just gave you one. Casting down every imagination to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Everything. Yeah. Everything comes to the obedience of Christ. Amen. 2 Corinthians, I think, 10 and 3 through 5. Something like that. Scripture. How do I cast down these thoughts of these women? The only in the flesh shall all words of flesh. For the weapon of my warfare is not carnal mind, but it's mighty through God's appointment and strong. will cast down every imagination that I have. Amen. 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 How do I fight when that life is so heavy and it's flood after flood after flood? And mama, I don't know what to do. I'm like... I'm, I'm drowning, God. God help me. God help. And all I don't know the scripture says that though the enemy come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord ought to stand it up against him with my defense. Though the weapon may be formed, it will not prosper. The righteous run to the Lord because he's a strong tower. The righteous run him and they're hid. He's a high place for us. How do I know this stuff? The fight. Unless I read. 
I know I've given you a lot back and forth stuff, and I've screamed, I've talked, and we've, it's got boring, it's got laughter, and we've went back and forth. Most of has been high in this place. But please don't get distracted with the only thing I want you to know. Build your faith in Jesus Christ and Him alone. Yeah. Have faith in Him. Have faith in His Word. Yeah. Have faith in His blood over your life personally because He'll do whatever it is that you ask Him to do according to the Scripture. Yeah. You find your Scripture and you hug up to that bad boy and you don't stop reading it until something shifts in your life. Yeah. You fighting depression, you grab your scripture about depression, it's not for you, whatever it may be, and, and you grab a hold of that bad boy, and you quote that, and you believe that, and you build your faith up in him, and, and I promise you that, that depression can't stay when Jesus shows up. Yeah. Right. Amen. 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 Whatever it may be you're going through. You want rid of the junk? You want rid, rid of that addiction? You want rid of that sickness? You want rid of whatever it may be? Find you a scripture. Build yourself up in that. And believe that he's enough God to do it for you. Yeah. A reminder one more time. The biggest act of, of faith that any person can ever have is when they get up out of their seat and come to the altar and believe yeah. that God will save them. Amen. He's the same God that can heal and move on your behalf. Yeah. God, I don't know nothing, but I do know that, that preacher said that you'll save me if I come to you. Here I am. And it works. Amen. Amen. Why? I have no idea. But it works. He desires to save us. Yes. He desires to save us. It's His perfect will to save us. Amen. But it's also His perfect will to heal us. Yeah. It's also His perfect will to set her. Listen, please hear me. No, we're not a money church, but we are a church that don't believe in living in poverty. Yes, come on. Amen. Amen. It, it is not anti-Bible for a person to walk around broke every day of their life. It is anti-Bible to walk around broke every single day of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Lord bless you. It is completely out of God's will for his sons and his daughters to walk around and be beggars. That's scripture. You hear me? Mm -hmm. He said, you're supposed to be the lender and not the borrower. The giver, not the receiver. Not every time. You're supposed to be one that's able to give and to bless and to sow. There is seasons you, you reap, but there's seasons you're supposed to plant, give. Yeah. What I'm saying is it breaks that poverty. How do you know that lesson? In the Word. Why am I broke? Because we need to come in covenant with this and come out of covenant with the poverty. How do I know I'm healed? I come in covenant with what the Scripture says. And, and come out of covenant with that sickness. Amen. Would y'all agree? Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> you ever heard that saying on Facebook, you never have a testimony unless you go to the test? Yeah. You ever heard that? Yeah. You, you'll never be able to have that testimony. What's a testimony? Well, I, I, well, I did have cancer, but now I don't have it no more. Amen. I'm set free. Yeah. I was bound up uh, drinking alcohol. I don't no more. Yeah. Amen. Why? Wow. Because I had enough faith in this, name, this man named Jesus Christ. Amen. That he loves me enough to set me free. Amen. And it ain't, Chris, it ain't just coming to church. It's, I get a relationship with him. Yeah. Yeah. Church is great. Church will send you to hell just like staying out of church. Amen. 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 Don't get tired. Amen. You can backside on these beautiful seats when you yeah. You can get demon possessed, sit on these pews we got, these seats we got. Yeah. Fall back into the world, sit on these seats every day. Or it's happened. It's when we you can stand to your feet and go play something. I'm closer. Uh, it don't matter. Something for <laughs> It's it's when we come to the place. You know what the sir, let me give you an advice. And we're just talking now. Preaching's pretty much done. <laughs> you know, the one thing I told Dad, he was asking about salvation. Before he got saved, he was asking about it. And he said, so if a person gets saved, what's the first thing they need to do? He said, I know you need to come to church. You need to read. You need to pray. You need to do this. You need to be better. You need to do all this stuff. Absolutely. But how many knows that ain't the first thing you're supposed to do? The number one thing that Jesus Christ wants you to do as soon as you give your life to Him and for any person that's been saved at all is to get a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right. With or without coming to church, you have a relationship with Him. Yeah. 
Yeah. If the church shut down today, I, he's still mine and I'm still his. You remember when I opened up with Paul? Paul said, it don't matter what they do to me or what they don't do to me. I know my relationship with the Lord Jesus. I'm standing right here. You're not moving me from my position in Him. You're not moving me. You're not swaying my mind how good He is in my life. You're not changing my thoughts about Him. I don't care if you cuss me. He's my best friend. I don't care if you love me. He's my best friend. I don't care if you steal from me. He's my best friend. I don't care if you give me $1,000. He's still my best friend. Let me just go ahead and tell some folks. You know that big, beautiful truck out I ain't got a dime in that. Somebody said, Pastor, let me love on you. He gave me a check for $10,000 and said, hey, let me give you a gift for Pastor Appreciation. It did not change my mind who God is in my life. It don't change that he's good for me. It don't change that he's bad for me. That truck don't define me. Angel's vehicle don't define me. These lights in here don't define my relationship with him. If they turn the lights off today, I'll love him anyways. I tell you to all the time. If we ain't got a dollar to pay our bills in full-time ministry, I'll love him anyways. Why? Because he's always been so good to me. He's never left me. He's never, at least in the word of God says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor my seed out begging for bread. Turn it down just a little bit. Now you might say it ain't unfair that you get a truck. I, I don't, I don't, I don't understand how it works. The only thing I know is I've been faithful in giving. I've been faithful in tithing. I've been faithful in sowing. I'll give everything I have. I give my life for the ministry. The only thing I know is a man called me and said, "I love you. Let me give this to you." That's the only thing that I know. I know that God looked down and said, "Hey, I know you want a truck. I'll give you the desires of your heart. I know you can use that truck. Let me just go ahead and bless you and show you yeah. that I am good." That was very private. I thought I wasn't going to tell that to nobody. But I just told you. I just want to remind you that that does not define who we are in God. Paul said it don't matter what they give me, what they don't give me. He's my God. Listen to me, church. It don't matter if I've, I've had that sickness attached to my life or I don't. I don't change who he is in my life. Amen. I still serve Him. I still pray. I still claim my healing. Now, now that we're born again believers, we can pull from the Scripture and say, "No, oh, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. I'm a son. I'm a daughter. And thus saith the Lord over His word, I'm healed. I am healed. I'm not sick. I am healed. I am not broke. I am rich in Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't have depression. I'm set free. Amen. Amen. Let's take it a step farther. Now I'm saved. Guess what happens? My kids is coming home. Guess what happens? My neighbors is coming. Every My cousins is coming. I'm saved now. Every person that comes in contact with me, I will shine my light. Just like the scripture says, I will be a salt that's got that savor. I'll have taste. I'll add value to every situation. Holy, everywhere that we go, we'll add value. If we're at the courthouse and they're kicking us out, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to add value to that place before I leave. If I go to a place that's plumb full of demonic oppression and possession, whatever, I'm going to leave there knowing that I gave value. You and every single person that wanted free got free. Amen. Why? Because I'm a salt that's got savor still. I'm a light that's not been hid. <coughs> you are a light that's not been hid. Amen. You understand? Amen. Blessing. A light that's not hid. Salt that has a taste. I hate going to a place that you walk in, it's dead all the time. Not just a church house. That, that's that great too. I'm talking about somebody's personal house. Yeah. Every time you get around them, it's all depression. Yeah. Depressing. Every time you're around them, it's always negative. Yeah. Sucks the life out of you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But you're called, if you come in contact with a church that's dead, a person that's dead, a household that's dead, now, as a born-again believer, you're supposed to add value to that situation. Amen. That's what the writer was saying. We thank God for possessions and things of the world and whatever it may be. These buildings, these seats, this microphone, that phone. We thank God for these things. But it don't change who He is if we didn't have Him. Right? It don't change who he is if we didn't have these things. Amen? It don't change, EJ. Y'all stay focused. We're almost done. It don't change not one bit my relationship with him if we didn't have this church. K 
Casey, if we didn't have a nice church that you sit there, you got your hand on right now. They won't def- they, listen, I, I promise. We don't need these churches to praise God. We don't need this building to praise God. We started right there in the little gazebo out there and it, we'll do it again. We started in the race cell out on the, the streets on a, on a piece of grassy lot 15 days before. We'll do it again. We ain't scared. Thank God for the building. Thank God for these seats. Thank God for the heat, the lights, the air, whatever. But just like Paul said, Scott, it didn't change who we thought he is, who we think he is, who we know he is. Jesus went to the city because of their unbelief in him. He couldn't do nothing. He couldn't do nothing. I thank God that we've got a house full of believers tonight. That our faith is built up. Has your faith been built up in Jesus Christ, even this service? I've seen two miracles tonight. Yeah. I've seen somebody pass from life from the dead. Yeah. The Word of God said that all of heaven rejoices when one person comes to the Lord. Yeah. They're having a double party right now. Yeah. I've seen enough miracles in this place to know that He's good. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I want to tell you tonight as we're about to pray, if you're here and you're still lost and you don't know the Lord is your Savior, have enough faith in Him that He is enough God to set you free. Yeah. Have enough faith in Him to know that, that you don't have to not believe in Him. You can believe. You're looking at many testimonies all over this place. I gave you four or five or six of people that Lord, the Lord has just completely transformed. And they're on fire for God. The worship team of this house, didn't they do good? Oh, but they was a wretched sinner. But God, you can't save me. You don't let know. Yeah. I'm sure if you go over this place and you're here and you're still lost, you go to every individual, I can almost guarantee there's at least one, if not more people, that's going through the exact, or went through the exact same stuff you're going through now. But the devil's lied to you and told you that your situation is worse than anybody else's. And you can't be set free. The Lord can't set you free. The devil's just trying to make you not have faith and belief in the Lord Jesus. You don't believe that he can save you. Try him. See what happens. See what happens when you run to this altar and surrender your life to the Lord Jesus. There's actually two people here tonight that can just testify the difference they felt when they got up. Amen. Tonight. Yeah. Every single one of us has a testimony. Amen. Build your faith up in the Lord Jesus. Build your faith up in His Scripture. Build your faith up in His in His blood. Have faith in His blood. Have faith in His Scripture. Stand on your healing. Stand on your deliverance. Seek out a teacher for the word. Amen. See, if you ain't if you ain't part of a church, seek a church somewhere. And they said you're welcome here. I didn't say that, they did. Uh, you are welcome. What I'm saying is this, you'll you'll feel home here at home. But go where you feel home. Get under a man of God or somebody and learn of the ways of the Word and of the ways of His Spirit. 